Ah, good morning, everyone. My name is Christy Stevens, and I'll be the platform assistant today. I'm assisting our awesome Reverend Jerry, who's our minister today. So, I also would like to welcome all those who are joining us on live stream today. You know, we have people from our congregation that have moved away, but they still come and join us on live stream. And we know that our hearts are always connected, no matter near or far. So thank you for joining us. We have some welcome packets for anyone that is new today. So would you raise your hand and our beautiful chaplain, Carly DePross, will hand you a packet of information. So please raise your hand up high if this is your first time so that we can share some information with you. I know there are some more out there. You don't have your hands up. Carly is our prayer chaplain today, so if you would like to meet with her for private prayer after the service, you can go to the chapel, which is you do a U-turn out of the doors. Carly is happy to meet with you and pray with you. We also have a group called a Healing Prayer Circle, and really, it's fairly miraculous just the power of prayer, and unity is based on the healing power of prayer. So if you would like to reserve a session with them, you can fill out the form that's outside the double doors on the table back there and set up a session. And you can put your request on these wings here, right in there, and it'll fly its way to Leslie, and she'll <laughs> let us know that you would like to meet with the Healing Prayer Circle. And of course, you all know, you can also call Silent Unity, the main unity group, and they pray 24 hours a day over your requests. And it's really a very healing place of comfort and nourishment. So if you're ever in need, and it's even late at night, it's called Silent Unity. So, as always, let's begin our service by lighting the Christ candle. And if you have a candle at home, those of you on live stream, why don't you get it now? We can all light our candles together. With gratitude, we gather as the unique expressions of the divine presence that we are. We pause to feel into this life force that invites us to be a creative partner with it. We allow this life force to fully embody within our whole being. We also sense and feel into the connection that exists between each one of us, the universal web of intelligence that we partake in as the human race. As we appreciate this web of connectivity with one and all, we move from a me to a we focus and express our desire to unite with all humanity through the energy of compassion and kindness. We invite this energy to rise up within us and extend outward to connect with Mother Earth and all sentient beings. This unifying spirit of oneness, 
the one I am presence we call the Christ. We light our candles now as a reminder that we are all blessed by being part of this one presence. It is the truth. Let us own it and make it real in our lives. And now we have our wonderful musician, Kelly Garmeyer, who will lead us in our opening song, You Got a Light. So let's stand and sing with Kelly. You got a light. You got a light. And it's shining up for everyone to see. You got a light. You've got a light, and it's shining out for everyone to see. And by some kind of miracle, well, I feel that light in me. You gotta love, you gotta love, and it's shining out for everyone to see. You gotta love, you gotta love. And it's shining out for everyone to see. And by some kind of miracle, now I feel that love in me. You've got a joy running through you now. It just can't be denied. Spirit like a fire crack the lightning up the sky. You've got a power. You've got a power. And it's shining out for everyone to see. You got a power. You got a power. And it's shining out for everyone to see. And by some kind of miracle, now I feel that love in me. Feel that power in me. Feel that power in me. Feel that light in me. Oh, I'm stopping here. I'm stopping right here. I didn't know it went on. Sorry. But you've got it. <laughs> and many thanks to Drew Towsley for playing on the drums. So everyone take this time to greet your neighbor with a handshake, a hug, or a namaste bow. Good morning once again. I'm Reverend Jerry for anybody that doesn't know me. 
And what a perfect song to start with in this eclipse week. You got a light. <laughs> so uh, I did something um, this week that I've never done before. Imagine that. <laughs> How daring. <laughs> and uh, as you know, I normally read a poem or something inspirational at the beginning of the service. And I decided to use AI. So I asked ChatGPT to write me something about, something philosophical about the eclipse. <laughs> and it did. I still have job security because it'll only write about two pages. So it won't write a full talk. So there you go. And here's what it had to say. As the solar eclipse approaches, we are presented with a profound opportunity to reflect on the nature of existence and the interplay of light and darkness within our lives. In the cosmic dance of celestial bodies, the sun and moon align in a breathtaking spectacle that captivates our senses and moves our souls. This alignment serves as a reminder of the delicate balance between opposing forces, light and shadow, clarity and mystery, certainty and ambiguity. The eclipse invites us to contemplate the dualities that define our human experience. Just as the moon momentarily obscures the radiant light of the sun, so too do the challenges and uncertainties of life often obscure our inner radiance and our sense of purpose. Yet, in the midst of the darkness, there is an opportunity for illumination. In the shadow of the eclipse, we are called to confront the shadows within ourselves, the fears, doubts, and insecurities that hold us back from fully embracing the light. It is in these moments of darkness that we are challenged to find the courage to confront our innermost truths and to emerge stronger and more resilient than before. At the same time, the eclipse reminds us of the cyclical nature of existence, the constant ebb and flow of light and darkness, of beginnings and endings. And just as the sun eventually emerges from behind the shadow of the moon, so too do we have the power to transcend our limitations and emerge into a new dawn of possibility. Ultimately, the solar eclipse serves as a potent symbol of transformation and renewal. It reminds us that even in the darkest of times, there's always the promise of light on the horizon. And it beckons us to embrace the journey of self-discovery and growth knowing that it is through facing our shadows that we ultimately find our greatest source of strength and wisdom. Wow. I know. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and there's more, but that will be later. So, now that we've been inspired by AI, <laughs> We turn in prayer for all those who are on our really long prayer list and all those who are on the slide this morning, just a portion of that list. And we hold all of these people and their intentions in our hearts as we join with them. And we pray for Deborah Gutierrez, Rebecca Mora, Daria Boninger, Kenny Myers, Gwen Bennett, Vanessa Smith, Barb Wally, Joyce Munzer and her family for the sudden passing of her husband, Donald Barnett for his passing and for his family, Carl Ann Wilshusen, for Liz, Bill, and Elmer Cowring, and for healing and peace in our world and for our future minister. For who or what else do we pray at this time? Please speak it out loud. Amen. 
And so we sum up all of our prayers in our unity prayer. There is only one presence and one power, active as the universe and as our lives, the all-loving goodness of God, and all is well. And we listen now to the daily word for today. The word for today is divine order. I see divine order expressing everywhere. Let's say that affirmation together. I see divine order expressing everywhere. I delight in the glorious colors, fragrances, and arrangements of plants in a garden. I celebrate the imagination the meticulous planning, and the diligent work that transformed a patch of ground, some seeds, water, and fertilizer into a beautiful, life-filled place. I recognize the role of divine order in the creation of this garden, expressing through everyone who worked to bring it into being. It began as a idea in divine mind. Someone received the idea. Cooperating minds developed a plan. Willing hands prepared soil, planted seeds, then watered and tended the growing plants. My spiritual vision perceives divine order, the eternal dance of mind, idea, and manifestation expressing everywhere. And from Genesis 1, verse 31, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And as I read this, I can't help but think about Marlene's garden. <laughs> so, as we enter our time of meditation together, let's just settle in, settle into our seats. Allow the body to come to complete rest shoulders dropping, tension releasing around the neck, belly relaxing, breath slowing and deepening into the lower abdomen, feet seeking the welcome support of the floor. Feel the spirit of the earth beneath our feet, shining as always with her shimmering golden aura light. We are so grateful for her wisdom and her presence. Breathe out a sigh. a sweet surrender to this present moment. Here, now, all is calm, all is right. Now imagine a luminous ball of pink gold energy right in front of you. It is pulsing with unconditional love and sparkling joy. Place your hands up 
just outside of its shimmering surface. Feel it emanating Christed light deep, deep into your soul. Allow this light to illuminate your whole being. Now imagine that the fields of light within each of us expand and unite to become one great bright light shining forth into the universe. We are light calling to light. Give thanks for our spirit guides, our guardian angels. They are here with us now. And we ask for their partnership, their divine assistance, as together we call in our new minister, heart to heart, light calling to light, creating a pathway of light to our door. Just envision this pathway. It is lined with such beauty and vibrant colors with the thoughts of kindness we hold for each other, with the smiles and words of encouragement and appreciation that we share with each other, with the help we extend to one another, with the mutual intention we cherish for a loving, supportive, spiritual community. The beauty of these thoughts, words, deeds, and intentions are like colorful flowers along the path, making it absolutely irresistible to a being of similar nature. And so we know in our hearts that all is in divine order and timing, and that a good and right minister is indeed making way to us. And so it is, and so it shall be. Amen. And now you can choose to sit quietly or join in the song with Kelly. It's a wonderful world.
So the talk title today is Signs of the Times. If you've been paying attention, you know <laughs> <laughs> that there's going to be a solar eclipse tomorrow, and it's going to uh, have a path right across the United States and into Canada. And there's also a psychic fair on this weekend in Nevada <coughs> City at the Miner's Foundry. And there's a lot of predictions about this uh, eclipse. And there's a lot of interpretations on the left and on the right. I had the misfortune to watch one last night <laughs> <laughs> from a certain end of the spectrum that was pretty crazy. <laughs> but anyway, I thought it might be of interest, however, to, um, to talk about this and to talk about celestial events, fortune telling, psychic readings, <coughs> mediumship, <coughs> and that whole spectrum of topics because I, I've never given a talk on that before, I know, and I've never heard one in a unity center, so I would imagine that this might be of some interest. If not, you can always get a cup of coffee or something. So. And I want to start with one of Unity's foundational principles as the context for us to take a look at these things. And it is the one that we prayed together earlier. There is only one presence and one power, active as the universe and as our lives, God the good omnipotent. Just think about that for a moment in terms of all of the different experiences that we can have, if we place them into that container, then doesn't that influence how we think about these things? <coughs> I'm sorry, I have allergies or something going on, so you'll have to forgive me if I'm coughing or <coughs> clearing my throat all the time. So it gives us a context for discussion. And I want to bring a biblical quote to our attention from Genesis chapter 1, 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So right there, the Bible makes it clear that God created the heavens and uses the sun and the moon for signs and for our use in keeping track then of time also. And the Bible also says that God created the star constellations that are in the sky, in our galaxy and in the universe. So in the Bible, people used the stars to navigate or to know what the season was, uh, and also, they looked to the sky for signs which are related to major events taking place in that time. One of them being the birth of Jesus. So we have the wise men looking into the sky and seeing the star that they think now was a comet, the star of Bethlehem as it was known as. And so the astrologers of that time used it to find their way to Jesus in the story. And in Old Testament times, this was considered fine since it tied in with the original purpose of God that he intended for the sky to be used in that way. However, over time, the church came down on astrology because it was seen as a kind of witchcraft whereby people were giving over their power to the stars or the planets or the sun or the moon and worshiping them in some instances. And also, of course, you have this conflict, you could say, of interest, because many people then were giving some of their power or all of their power to the astrologers or to whoever else, and were ignoring what the priests were saying. So there was this little fight going on for people's allegiances. So, of course, the easy thing to do is to ban it, right? There was a time when religion and astrology got along with mutual respect. And again, quoting from scripture, the book of Daniel, the Old Testament, chapter 2, verse 2. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans 
to show the king his dreams. So they all came and stood before the king, considered quite normal. In my own personal experience, I went to a psychic when I was 21 back home in Ireland, or a fortune teller, and she told me several specific things, about 10 different things that all happened within the next year. And I'm not talking vague things. I'm talking about very specific, some kind of strange things. And they all came too. So she obviously had a gift. She had second sight or whatever you want to call it. She even told me that I would not be ordained as I was planning. She said there would be a delay. And she said, but you will be ordained and you will end up leaving the priesthood. Now, I can't say that getting that information from her made really any difference to me. It wasn't like I believed it, because at the time I thought, oh, well, who knows, right? She could be making it all up. Um, but she wasn't. And again, she was very accurate in what she had to say. But I certainly, as I said, didn't believe that all these things were going to happen just because she said it. And she was a devout Roman Catholic who went to Mass every day. And she told me that the first time she ever had the gift kind of show up when she was a little girl and she was walking with her local priest, who was a friend of the family. And she said to him, blah, 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 <laughs> and told him all these secrets about his life that he had. <laughs> and he was totally shocked, of course, like, how do you know this? And she said, I don't know. I just know these things. So he told her that she was to dedicate her life to God and that she was to use her gift for good and to go to Mass every day, which she did. So a great example of someone having a gift and utilizing it for good. Likewise, I have dabbled in mediumship. Shock, horror, nobody, <laughs> nobody's, anybody needs smelling salts? And we took classes right here in the sanctuary, and we did readings right here in a class with our resident witch, sorry, medium, <laughs> uh, Claire. Hi, Claire. Just joking. And I had some very accurate, accurate intuitions whereby I connected with the spirit of the deceased people and brought in information that was validated by the people that I was sitting with. And likewise, I had people in this room, um, can't see you now, but you're here, um, who brought in deceased friends and relatives of mine. All to say, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt in your philosophy, to quote Shakespeare. Meaning that there is a whole lot of stuff that we really barely dabble into and don't really know too much about. I've had intuitions come about people and people dying or whatever. And so it's all there and it's available to us if we have the interest, number one, if we have the intention, and if we pay attention. But for a lot of people, it's scary and um, some people like shut it down because they find it too challenging. They don't want to know <laughs> about the future, particularly for other people or family members. So getting back to the eclipse, there's all this speculation about tomorrow's eclipse and its meaning or its prophetic nature. And if you look online at the YouTubes, many astrologers, spiritual leaders, channelers, writers are saying, perhaps jumping on the bandwagon, that it's an auspicious event heralding in a new era and energy for humanity. Now, how many times have we heard that? <laughs> right. It was supposed to be 2012. Well, now many of them are saying, no, 2012 was the beginning, but this is the day. Okay. And they're saying that from now to April 20th is going to be a hang on to your seat couple of weeks. So what are we to make of all of this and predictions and prophecies, and etc.? I'm reminded of a TV evangelist, I won't say his name, <laughs> back in the 90s who used to talk about the European Union as having the mark of the beast. 
and being the devil incarnate. Now, of course, just for clarity, in unity we don't believe in a devil per se. And one of the signs of the devil that he quoted was the twelve horns, which I think it's out of the book of Revelation, which of course he said were the twelve countries that made up the European Union. That was his rationale. Some years passed and I happened to be channel surfing one day and who showed up again but this TV evangelist. And once again he was banging on about how the European Union was the devil incarnate. So my ears picked up because in the interim the European Union had grown to 18 countries, <laughs> not 12. And guess what? <laughs> now he was quoting some other piece of the book of Revelation that had talked about 18 signs of the devil. Needless to say, there's no accountability there. He can say what he wants in his program. No one is saying, hey, wait a minute, it was 12 a couple of years ago, you know. He could say whatever he wants and no one would challenge him. So that brings me then back to the eclipse and the predictions being made by many of the people perhaps that we follow or we watch or pay attention to regularly. For me, watching and following some of these people often is more of a curiosity. Like I will watch Pam Gregory, she's an English astrologer. I think partially because of her English accent. <laughs> it's, it's so perfect and clipped, you know. But I like what she says and her approach to astrology. Her take is that the interaction and the interconnection of celestial bodies creates an energy field that influences us, just as we know that the moon influences the tides, bodies of water, babies are born on full moons, and that some people uh, you know, have emotional breakdowns when the moon is full, etc. She does not say that the astrological charts are predictive of events so much as she says they are influences. Like if you go into a room and the temperature in the room is set for 120, you're going to start sweating. It's going to be warm. If you go into a cold room, you're going to feel cold. So it's more that influence. These, these energies will influence, perhaps. And she is saying that there is going to be an intense energy at work from April 8th to the 20th. Likewise, spiritual leader and intuitive Matt Kahn has said that this upcoming period will be possibly the breaking down of the financial system for the good of humanity. Lee Harris, another English intuitive, says it's going to be a time of great change. Paul Selig, channeler, likewise says it's going to be a line in the sand. And in recent weeks I've noticed a pile of videos showing up on YouTube and as I said it seems everybody is jumping on the bandwagon. And some of them, lately especially, are you know the, the old rube of God's anger. This, this is a sign of God's anger and of course depending on which side of the political spectrum you're on God is either angry at this person or at that person. <laughs> so are those who are late to this prediction party just riding the coattails of everybody else? Perhaps. I guess time will tell. And that's really one of my points. Let's make sure that time tells us. Let's pay attention. Let's see what happens. And let's see who's right and who's wrong. But just for the heck of it, let's summarize but they were all saying collectively in one way or another. The event is a major turning point which will harbor great change and it, would, it will instigate an upheaval in society that will be challenging for many but ultimately will be for humanity's good and bring about a more just and equitable society. You could think of it as a time or period when all the spiritual work that we have been doing over these many years is finally maybe going to kick in and kick some butt. <laughs> now, isn't that a message that you want to hear? Yes. That there's finally going to be payoff here. And of course, we're going to be on the right side, yes? <laughs> that being the case, I would say that th it's there for a time for us to be careful about getting carried away with the prediction side of things. We could be setting ourselves up for disappointment 
for righteous anger or even ideas of vengeance. Perhaps one of the unintended gifts of this time is for us to take a look at the emotions that come up when we hear predictions. First of all, do we get into the whole fear cycle that, again, so many people love to generate that? Or do we get into that the other side of the coin where we get euphoric and, as I said, you know, we, we kind of think it's somebody else is going to get their comeuppance. And we're happy about that, maybe. What might the thought of these predictions bring up for us, and what might come to the surface to be released? What old ancestral energies may still be lurking in the basement of ourselves and of our souls? If you think about these things, and I remember as a child, I was probably four, maybe, and uh, I was playing outside in the yard, it was summertime, and my neighbor next door came down, and all of a sudden, the sky darkened. And I remember, I remember the silence, all the birds stopped singing, and we had a solar eclipse. And I'm not even sure that people knew that it was going to happen. You know. And we know these stories from primitive tribes that when these things happen, some people have killed themselves, some people have gone crazy. You know. So there's all that ancestral stuff that's still alive in us. So we can kind of let it breathe. We can let it come out. We're, g we're, we're being given this opportunity, once the second in a few years, five years, something like that. This could be a time of great healing energy if we choose. So there's always the opportunity for us, isn't there, to, to use it in a way that's productive and positive for ourselves. If we're open, obviously. That's my prediction. And let us pay attention and hold accountable those who have made predictions about the event. Let's not just, oh, forget about what, you know. No, say, who, who got it right, perhaps? Who didn't? You know, pay attention, note it. And um, that should inform us then, perhaps, about how we look at some of these people and their predictions. So just as I opened with a piece from AI, which was a philosophical uh, piece on the eclipse, I also asked AI, chat GPT, to write me uh, a piece with a spiritual bent. And here's what it said. It's very poetic, really lovely, both that one and this one. As the celestial ballet unfolds, and the moon gracefully dances between the earth and the sun, we were reminded of the profound interconnectedness of all things in the universe. The solar eclipse serves as a powerful symbol, urging us to look inward and contemplate the deeper mysteries of existence. In the shadow of the eclipse, we are invited to embark on a journey of self-discovery and spiritual awakening. Just as the moon momentarily obscures the radiant light of the sun, so too do the distractions of the material world often veil the brilliance of our true essence. Yet, in the darkness, there is opportunity for illumination. As the light of the sun emerges once again, let us embrace this moment of clarity and renewal. Let us release the shadows of doubt and fear that cloud our minds. And let the radiant energy of the eclipse infuse us with strength and purpose. May we use this celestial event as a catalyst for transformation, shedding old patterns and beliefs that no longer serve us, and embracing the infinite potential that lies within. Let us remember that, like the sun and moon, we are but fleeting vessels in the vast expanse of time and space, yet our souls shine eternally bright. In the wake of the eclipse, may we emerge with a deeper sense of connection to the universe, to each other. May we walk the path of life with reverence and gratitude, honoring the sacred dance of light and shadow that shapes our journey. As we witness the beauty and majesty of the solar eclipse, let us be reminded of the divine presence that resides within us all, guiding us ever onward toward the light. And that brings me back to the foundational statement 
there is only one presence and one power, active as the universe and as our lives. God the good, omnipotent. And my question that I leave us with is, who or what are we encountering when we interact with genuine psychics, mediums, angels, archangels, ascended masters? Who are we interacting with but ourselves? There's only one presence. It's our self in another form. It's our own knowing, it's our intuition, it's our wisdom, and it is the one presence. So, so be it. And so we encounter ourselves and know ourselves now as source, as the divine presence that's always giving, always receiving in that beautiful flow of life and energy. So I invite us to place our love offering over our hearts. If you're giving with someone, hold hands. As we say together our blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Amen. And now Kelly has a beautiful song for us by India Ari. a journey, not a destination. There are no mistakes, just chances we've taken. You lay down your regrets, cause all we have is now. Wake up in the morning, and get out of bed, start making a mental list in my head. new dreams, new ways open my 
We have blessed these gifts in our hearts, and now we dedicate them to the work of unity here and worldwide. Thank you, God. We have our announcements. So our volunteer of the month is Mary Jo Kim. Mary Jo said what she loved when she heard me say that Unity was more of a school than a church, because she is indeed a student. And she has volunteered to help us with the altar and uh, with the assistance of Christy and Peter, and then recently with Karen, and made friendships with them. And also then in hospitality with Heidi, putting out the coffee and the treats on Sundays. And she realizes that volunteerism has taken her to yet another level of relationship with unity and with all of us. And that uh, the takeaway lesson is that working together brings unity to our come unity. So, Mary Jo, come on down. Yes. We are so grateful for all of our volunteers. And today we have another uh, example of how our community volunteers. We have our healing practitioners and... Um, oh. Take her out and... Okay, so it's next Sunday, yeah, and there is one opening for you with, for, with Christy at 4 p.m., so if you want to grab that spot, just talk with Christy, and then we have um, the gardening. If you love gardening, but you don't have one of your own, and you'd like to have a place to go do some gardening and help Marlene out with hers and Cliff, then you can see her afterwards, just... Everybody probably knows you, our board president, but nonetheless. And um, we also then have today, after the service, the blood pressure and glucose monitoring in the library provided by our retired nurses. Thank you for that. And next Sunday will be Salad Sunday, so we will have time after the service to uh, break salad together as opposed to bread and bring your favorite salad toppings or dressing. Now, today you notice things are a little bit different back there. We were supposed to have the back third of the carpet installed on Thursday, but unfortunately the person installing it got sick. So we sent him love and blessings that he will be here bright and early tomorrow morning. And so we don't have the full um, you know, outlay back there for uh, refreshments. And then immediately after the service, we will need help getting all of that stuff up past those, the pillar. And hopefully tomorrow morning, then our new carpet will be laid there in the back section. If you are interested in skills for better disagreeing with people, <laughs> it is the political season after all. So you may have hard conversations with your family, neighbors, maybe even your spouse. Um, avoiding any friends or families due to differing opinions for fear of angry outbursts and loss of relationships. Any, anybody suffering from this? Come and see and practice skills for, better, for disagreeing better on Friday evening, April 9th, from 6 to 8 p.m. What did I say? May? Oh, I tell you. Losing it. Okay, so that, see, that was my ploy to get you to pay attention to the date. It's Friday, April 19th, from 6 to 8 p.m. Our presenters will be Jeff and Martha Kirishian, who are members of Braver Angels, an organization started by blue and red-leaning folks who want to help depolarize our politics and respect each other while doing so. There's a, it's going to be held here. $20 at the door, and all proceeds goes to Raising the Roof Fund. So if you have, um, you know, friends or family that might be interested, um, 
there will be a boxing ring at the back. <laughs> and you can settle things. No. This is similar to the, um, uh, was it sitting room conversations, living room conversations that um, Sushila uh, pioneered there a few years ago. So if you're interested in that, please uh, do come to it. Um, Community Shred, uh, Owens Estate and Wealth Strategies Group are doing on-site shredding. So if you have a whole load of shredding, this is just a kind of public service announcement. You can go there for a donation of $10 a box. All proceeds go to Interfaith Food Ministry. And that's next Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., 426 Sutton Way. It's over there on your way to Grocery Outlet. Okay, which is where you all go after service, because that's where I meet everybody afterwards. <laughs> Wise shoppers. So we thank our platform assistant, Christy, our musician, Kelly, our greeters, Joe Darby and Somerville, ushers, Mark Wando, Linda Bichetti, our chaplain, who will be available out the door to the left and left again, uh, Carly DePras, our hospitality, Mary Cooper, Sydney Grisby, Sound, Daryl Venata, Livestream, Leslie Venata, Bookstore, Deb Edmonds, Alter, Patricia Plank, and... Um, Sandy, who was our teacher this morning. Thanks to everybody. All right. I think that's it. Let us stand and pray the unity prayer. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and I am, and all is well. Now we have our closing song.
a light-filled week.